Welcome to ADF TV. My name is Frank Impius and I'm from the Oracle JDevop and ADF product management team. In this session, which is the fourth out of three recordings on error handling, we talk about error handling options on the view layer and of course on the server container layer. As you see on this image, there's a multi-layer approach in Oracle IDF to handle errors and the most central points for sure are the binding layer and the controller where you want to handle this. So for the binding layer that is covered in the second recording of this session and the controller layer in the third recording. So you want to have a look at this. This session more or less rounds it up, explains what you can do on the faces level, on the view layer level and also sums up everything that we heard about best practices and what you should do. So let's get started. First of all, the error handling on the view layer, what it does is it handles exceptions that cannot be handled by the task flow. Now the task flow, as we learned, doesn't handle anything that happens during render response as that is just too late for the task flow to operate on. So here the options that you have are mostly, if for instance the error is in the managed bean, to use a try-catch block. There are some errors, however, where you're kind of out of scope of handling it and you would have to wait for another Java server faces version that allows you to specify your own IDF faces handler, error handler, for example, which will come with Java server faces too. But as this recording is for Java server faces uh, 1.2, we're not going into detail here. There. Anyway, you will have in the future the ability to get one more level of control. Now what are typical problems that occur on the view layer? And this is maybe to mitigate a little bit uh, the risk. Uh, first of all, what could happen of course is that you have a null pointer exception in a managed bean. So in the response where you work with specific object, you make the assumption that an object is not null where in fact it is. Now that is definitely something that you can avoid by having a try-catch block surrounding the code in the managed bean. Other options where things go wrong is where you have expression language to just addresses an object that doesn't exist. Typical candidates are those where you try to address objects that are out of scope, like trying to use expression language to access the binding that belongs to a parent task flow and not to the current task flow that you're in. Sounds strange, but it's a very common mistake that we see that people try to reach out of a bounded task flow to access objects that exist on the parent level, which by definition is not possible. So it will just read in, reach into empty air. Another problem could be the misspelling of an object. If you construct the expression language, not with the expression language builder, but manually yourself, in this case, you um, may end up with a typo in the uppercase, lowercase um, formatting of the object. If you followed this whole ADF TV session, then of course you watch the uh, core piece of the recordings, which is about the architecture pattern and there are some complex pattern and the more complex you go the more we recommend that you split up the model layer into its own ADF library. Now if you have this ADF library with a model layer in it and you forget to configure this ADF library on the assembling application, on the assembling overall master application, then what you would see is that expression language will cause an error saying that it cannot find this entity attribute and if you look into this and if you, for instance, remove the requirement for the attribute from the view, then it will come up with the next entity attribute you cannot find. And this is a clear indication that a library is missing. Now, if you properly test your application, then view layer exceptions, other than maybe in a managed bean, should not happen. And you should be able to catch these in the QA processing of your application. Because if an object isn't there for testing, for sure it won't be there for runtime or production. So the better you QI your application, the most likely you catch all of the problems that are in the view layer. So let's have a look at this slide here. So this shows just a little bit uh, of a uh, teasing uh, exception. So we throw the JBO exception from a managed bean. Now, as you can see, it will be caught by the browser. The browser will show you uh, a notification will show you a notification which is a dialogue. But as you can see if you go back to when I talk about exception handling on the binding layer, this dialogue looks so much different than the dialogue that is raised by the binding layer error handler. And of course the error handler on the binding layer will put you in control allowing you to suppress 
exceptions or translate exceptions or just show them more nicely than they are by default. So the question is how can you catch an exception in a try-catch block on a managed bean and make sure that the error handler of the binding layer handles the exception. And that's on this slide here. So as you can see there's an option that you have to get access to the binding layer and to queue an error into the binding layer which means that though you catch this exception on the managed bean, I should say caught the exception on the managed bean, you can queue it back in in the binding layer and then the error handler defined for the binding layer in the DC data binding CPX file will handle that error and then you get a lot better control of how to handle the exception and you can show a proper dialog here. So the surflet container, well that's the last resort really and what happens is that if there is a not handled exception that you have then it will hit the surflet container and typically sh show you this nice little error stack trace that nobody really wants to expose to their users. Um, so what you can try to do is for any kind of unhandled exceptions that you don't find a way to deal with you configure the web XML file either for the HTTP error message or for the exception class and then tell the web XML file to direct to a different page for instance. Still that would take out the user of its working condition or working context but it's much better than just showing a stack trace. So that's the last resort that you can do and that's I think the error handling uh, that we use for I don't know how many years but several years uh, when we work with JSPs or with Surflet natively. So the exceptional handling uh, in the WebXML file, here's an example on this slide and you can see it handles the HTTP 404 error or it's just handling the uh, throwable class whenever there's an exception coming then uh, you specify what to do with it in the WebXML file. So nothing new here, that's just traditional error handling. And as you've seen, hopefully, by watching all of the recordings I did on error handling, we can do much better in ADF and you should do much better. Um, this slide, as that is the last on our error handling excursion, um, just shows you the whole error handling surface. And I started with that slide, so I will finish with that slide. It shows you the several layers of error handling in Oracle IDF. And you should come up with a strategy where you define which errors you want to handle where. Now, my recommendation to you is to handle errors as close to the origin as possible. So if there's an exception that potentially could be thrown on the business service, recommendation is to catch them there. However, some of the exceptions you want to have bubbling up to notify the user about it. And there are exceptions which are application errors. Yeah, and application errors, the way to broadcast an error like a validation error from the business service to the view layer is by exception. So you throw an exception to tell the user that, for instance, the salary that it just entered is not in a valid range. And there's no other way in Java to do it. So that is why you will have application exceptions and you will have system exceptions. Now, a system exception typically is a runtime failure. This is what you may want to suppress or may want to handle on the business service layer but then application errors should bubble up to the view layer and that should go through the binding layer because that puts you in control. As you can see the binding layer sits next to the business service and it has this common shared uh, error handler class that you can override and then manipulate or hide or just beautify exceptions. And then there's a task law, we talked about this in the last recording and the view layer. So you have your options, you have your chances, you just need to work on a strategy. So what is the best practice? What is the conclusion for error handling? Well I already mentioned come up with a strategy, try to handle exception as close as possible to the origin, um, decide between errors that need reporting and errors that don't need reporting, think about an incident reporting strategy where if there are ser serious errors or problems with your application that someone who is on charge for fixing the problem immediately receives a notification be it by email or SMS or whatever to, to look at it. Never ever assume an object to exist. It's just you know a little bit of laziness uh, if you're just avoiding a check for a null pointer. Of course there are situations where in 99.9% .9 of all of the cases the object exists but if for whatever unforeseen 
reason the error does not or is caused because the object doesn't exist, you want to make sure that you have a block around as a try-catch block. So I would always make this mandatory so that your code is given a chance to correct the error. And if it cannot correct the error, well, you can always rethrow it, right? So make sure you have that. Uh, another interesting point, an important point, is that you need to plan because you can assume some of the exception to happen. So try to reduce the number of um, unprepared or um, errors that happen because you didn't foresee them to happen. And that will be something that shows that runtime will annoy the user quite a bit. But then over the time when you extend your error handling implementation by the user experience errors, you will shorten and close down the gap to unforeseen errors and that should bring you into a more stable environment for your application. Custom exception strategies, of course, make sure you lock um, if, and there are some uh, strategies for that as well, if you have very sensible information uh, that would end up in your exception. And I talked about this when I uh, recorded the security sessions, then you may even want to check for the authorization a user has to see, for instance, the full stack trace with errors, or if it's not a privileged user, you just want to say some excuse and just giving a broad idea of what's going on and why that error is. So you want to distinguish there in the error handler as well for the authorized user. So the access business service methods, uh, that should always happen through the binding layer. And the reason is that if you access anything in the business service outside of the binding layer, what will happen is that the exception goes to this access path, most likely a managed bean, and not through the binding layer, which from a perspective of synchronizing the iterator with the data changes, but also from the error handling perspective, is just the wrong thing to do in ADF. Always work through the binding layer, use try-catch blocks in the managed bean, use the ability to define your own framework-wide exception handler for the task flow as the last resort. It shouldn't be your first choice. Always try to solve problems on the bounded task level that wouldn't take the user out of the working context. If there is an error that the ADF task flow exception handler, the framework handler, doesn't handle, then you can create your own custom exception handler and try uh, your best guess and see if you can fix this. Some further reading is mentioned here on the slide. Of course, there's a lot more on error handling that we, we, than uh, what we put on the slide here. Um, best is to Google for it, just ADF and error handling or exception handling, and you will find a lot of more blog entries, even tweets or OTN forum references. And that's my last recommendation for you is that if you're uncertain about how to handle a specific error or if you're experiencing something that you don't know how to handle, use the OTN forum, ask a question, and then you will get the answer. Maybe not the same hour, but probably the same day.